45 seconds. Thirty seconds. That's it. Take your time. Sit there. There's no current. There's not much breeze. Don't let the little lag on the inside of you, though. So the trick is, if you ever see that, bear off a little bit. Get your boom right out so you can't get in there. You know. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. <whistles> Judy, at about six seconds, you should have been leaning into that boat, yeah? Getting the real lured eel on and get that pump. Wasn't over that time. No, thanks. <laughs> okay. So right now you can see your starboard tack is definitely your long tack. So it's so important that you get speed off that line so you can just stay on that tack. So what I was saying there, Connor, is when you came off the start line there, it was almost like they were making the winner mark. So that's the long tack. Yeah. That's the one, if you have come out off the line with speed, you know, you just stay in your long tack, you're grand, you can keep going, you know. You're grand, you have to tack off because, you, you know, you're not in the first row. But that's why it's so important to have that speed coming off in the first row. Okay. So our window marks right there, which means that when they come off the line, there was definitely a right shift because you were pointing closer to the mark when you were on starboard. So my hand's the boat here. If you're coming off, if you're coming off the line and you're pointing way away from the mark, the likelihood is, is that the wind has gone left because the OD or the PRO will always try and set a windward mark that's dead up to the wind. But he can't move that mark after the five minutes. So by you coming off the line and not making the mark at all means that there's a header. So you definitely want to tack off the line and then you're on that lift and then you can work your way up the beat after that. Um, vice versa, if you come off the line and you're like, whoa, I'm nearly making this windward, like I'm on a long tack here all the way close to the windward, the likelihood is the wind has gone right. And that's why it's so important then that you have that clear air coming off the line where you can go, ah, this is grand, I'm just gonna stay here, I'm gonna keep going fast. But if you haven't had that gap to lure it where you can go for a bit of speed, if you've got some of the sail over the top of you or you haven't got the speed off the line, then you're shafted and you have to tack off or you have to sit in dirt and go all the way up to the wind mark. And that's why some people say racing 90% is the start. Judy, wait a little bit longer before you pull the boat over on top of yourself, yeah? For the next tack. So just one little critique, Judy. Um, good motor skills, but the timing was off where she should have waited for the sail to break a little bit longer before she pulled the boat over on top of herself. She pulled it over on top of herself, but the sail hadn't broken, so you're kind of like fighting the wind.
see Gav hand on the boom, but really lightly pushing it out. Oh! Oh! <laughs> his main, his main touch the uh, win right there. But <clears throat> so there's another reason why you don't come in on the on the port ley line so <laughs> oh marco is he getting in your way is he is he doing his turns uh in the middle of something <laughs> so so a good example here is like perfect because brendan and marco both coming in on the port ley line and both of them getting shafted by other boats getting in their way and yeah like marco was the right away there on gav um, but you don't want that like trouble so when it comes to the bigger events Europeans and nationals and stuff you have to come in earlier so that when you do tack you're approaching the winter mark on starboard and you get rid of all this hassle that you just saw here and um, because there is guys like Gav like you know he didn't do it on purpose there you know, he had to do his turns um, and then uh, you know, he got in the way, he didn't mean to, but it happens and you don't want that crap. You don't want to have to enforce rules or have any hassle or interaction with other boats. You just want to be going as fast as you can without getting, getting any hassle. So one way you can avoid that is come in early. If you're out on the left, come in a little bit early, be 20, 30 boat lengths below the windward mark so that you can get over to the starboard side, tack onto starboard and then approach the windward mark on starboard, cutting back on all the possible hassle you might have with some sailors kind of maneuvering around you. So looking at the boat sailing downwind, it seems like everyone's moved to the left. Given that there is it's a tiny start, I'm sorry, start it's a tiny run. There's no current here, and the wind is pretty much equal around the course. The guys should seriously look at why are they moving left and right. Obviously, some of them are moving out to the side to try and keep clean air, but I don't see why these guys here are moving all the way out. You see a laser here, it's creeping down the middle, looks like he's gonna do very well. We'll keep an eye on that, so that's kind of a bluish hole. And we've got a guy with a blue hat, that's 4.7 now, he's gonna get shafted on the run. Um, let's see what's going on here now. We've got Connor in an interesting form, leaning forward. Sheet in, lean in. Uh, we need we need lured heel on the boat when you're sheeting in. See Richard, much better lured heel on the boat. Daggerboard down fully. Guys, lured heel on those boats when you're pointing up and rounding that mark. Lean into the boat. You know you can use that to your advantage. You're using less rudder and you're able to flatten out the boat, giving you a little pump coming out of the mark as well. Yeah. See Gav leaning on his knees, getting that boat still way too tight to the mark though, I think. But Guys, really conscious boats, these lasers here. Uh, Luke and Connor, you're sheeting in, which is fine, but you're sheeting in too quick, yeah? You've got to do it in a kind of like in unison with the angle of your boat to the wind. Yeah, both of you are almost sheeted on fully and you're still on a run there, yeah? You'll get away with that on a windy day, but on a light day, you can see you're just shafted. Like You've got no momentum in your boat right now, yeah? Cool. And I still haven't heard one sailor out loud ask for room at the lured mark. Didn't hear it. Guys, the thing is, right, at the Europeans and the Nationals and stuff, the reason you're saying it, it's not just to the sailor that you want room from. You want the jury to turn his head, or her head, or you want the other sailors to turn around and have a look. Because if something does happen, then you have witnesses, yeah? If you go like, sorry, do you mind if I have a bit of room? And then they go, yeah, yeah, no problem. At the last minute, they go, fuck you, and they just point up. You've got no witnesses, yeah? But if you go, room, please, 
Then all of a sudden goes, someone goes, yeah, I heard that. And if they were well, they were at three boat lengths when I heard that. Boom, you've got a witness, yeah? Really important. <laughs>